SpaceX will make history this month. While Boeing and NASA are struggling with their huge setbacks, SpaceX is set to soar with one of the most anticipated missions yet, Polaris Dawn. For the first time in the history of aerospace, we will witness an all-civilian crew aboard the Dragon spacecraft, reaching altitudes higher than ever before. In today's episode, we dive deep into this historic launch, how it will humiliate Boeing and NASA, and so much more. All right, let's dive right in. Polaris Dawn is the first mission in the Polaris program, an ambitious private initiative operated by SpaceX on behalf of Shift4 Payments CEO Jared Isaacman. This groundbreaking mission will feature a crew of four members, led by billionaire Jared Isaac Mann himself. SpaceX's involvement in the Polaris Dawn mission is monumental. They aren't just participating, they are orchestrating every aspect of this groundbreaking endeavor. The mission's primary vehicle, the Crew Dragon spacecraft, has proven its reliability with 15 successful flights. This spacecraft will be launched by the Falcon 9 rocket, renowned for its unmatched success rate. The combination of Falcon 9 and Dragon ensures an almost guaranteed success rate for the mission. On the communication front, advanced Starlink laser technology will provide rapid space-to-ground communication. This system offers speeds up to 100 times faster than traditional satellite internet, with the capability to maintain a 100 Gbps connection per link and over 99% uptime. This ensures that astronauts will have robust and reliable communication throughout the mission. When stepping into the vastness of space, astronauts need a reliable EVA suit, and SpaceX is taking charge of this crucial aspect. SpaceX custom-designed EVA suits will protect the astronauts during this pioneering commercial spacewalk. These suits are the result of over two years of research and development, evolving from their IVA suits and represent the next generation of space safety technology. The new EVA suits feature advanced materials, enhanced thermal management, and helmet displays for crucial information. This marks the first privately developed spacesuit for a private space mission, a significant milestone in the history of space travel. The backbone of the mission is SpaceX's expertise. Two of the four crew members, Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon, are SpaceX veterans, bringing in-depth knowledge of the company's systems and procedures. Their participation ensures that the mission will be executed with a profound understanding of SpaceX's technology and operational processes. SpaceX's involvement in the Polaris Dawn mission is comprehensive, covering every aspect of the endeavor. SpaceX will oversee every detail from their state-of-the-art control center in Hawthorne, California, which has successfully guided over 45 crewed and uncrewed Dragon missions to the ISS. This level of vertical integration is unprecedented in commercial spaceflight. SpaceX isn't just launching a mission, they are demonstrating their full-spectrum capabilities in space exploration. From liftoff to return, every critical component bears the SpaceX signature. While other space organizations have taken decades and billions of dollars to achieve similar milestones, SpaceX is accomplishing them faster, cheaper, and with a flair for innovation. Polaris Dawn isn't just a demonstration mission, it's a declaration of SpaceX's absolute dominance in the new space race. In this historic mission, the Polaris Dawn mission will use the resilient spacecraft, previously flown in Inspiration, but with far more ambitious goals. While Inspiration reached an altitude of 575 kilometers with the astronauts remaining inside the spacecraft, Polaris Dawn aims for an initial orbital altitude of 1,400 kilometers. This will be the highest manned flight since Apollo 17 in 1972, surpassing the Earth orbit record set by Gemini 11 in 1966. But that's not all. For the first time in history, History, the crew will open the spacecraft's hatch and step out into the vacuum of space at an altitude of 700 kilometers, directly facing the harsh environment of deep space. This unprecedented challenge demands that every system on the spacecraft, from the piping to the touchscreens, and especially the spacesuits, must prove their functionality under extremely harsh conditions. This mission will pave the way for two subsequent flights in the Polaris program, with the third flight utilizing the Starship. So, it will serve as a bridge between two generations of SpaceX spacecraft. The success of Polaris Dawn isn't just a technical achievement. It could trigger a strong wave of criticism toward Boeing and NASA. Currently, Boeing's Starliner spacecraft hasn't been scheduled for return, with the best-case scenario being late July and the worst-case scenario being mid-August. This is truly a nightmare for Boeing, a company that has faced numerous safety risks in recent years and desperately needs a public relations win. When NASA awarded contracts to send astronauts to the ISS to both Boeing and SpaceX, Boeing received $4.2 billion, while SpaceX got only $2.6 billion. At the time, many believed Boeing, with its experience dating back to the 1960s, would reach the ISS first, but reality proved otherwise. Now, Boeing's first crewed launch of Starliner looks unreliable, 
and is a source of embarrassment for the company. Meanwhile, SpaceX, which has been launching people to the ISS since 2020, is about to undertake its own historic mission, independently and proudly. Comparisons within the community are inevitable. If resilience flies before Starliner returns, it will be a significant blow to Boeing, highlighting the fumbling and flaws in their crew flight test mission. NASA and Boeing are evaluating Starliner's propulsion system and five small helium leaks in the service module. Teams are conducting ground tests at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico and another investigation at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama to determine the cause of the failures. Mark Nappy, vice president and manager of Boeing's commercial crew program is confident that the Starliner program will be stronger after addressing these issues. All this information is going to go in a big bucket, and all the engineers are going to review it and try to see if it doesn't point to root cause or point to some additional testing that we can do in the future to eliminate this problem once and for all, he said. While the two experienced astronauts are considered as not stranded on the ISS, and although NASA and Boeing have asserted that Starliner can return astronauts to Earth in an emergency, the spacecraft hasn't been approved for normal return scenarios. This implies that NASA is also very doubtful about Starliner's reliability and won't agree to have the two astronauts return on Starliner unless there are no other options. Starliner can stay on the ISS for a maximum of 45 days and Polaris Dawn is about to launch. Boeing needs to quickly resolve these issues or else their PR team will face some of the hardest work yet. The delay in Starliner's return also impacts NASA's planned spacewalks for ISS maintenance. It's almost ironic, as NASA themselves might become the next target of satire. NASA's once-proud space program now finds itself mired in a quagmire of outdated technology and failed outsourcing. The agency's planned spacewalks for crucial ISS maintenance hang in limbo, not just due to Starliner's delays, but because of a glaring Achilles heel, their antiquated spacesuits. Their design, older than some of the astronauts at the present time, is a stark reminder of NASA's struggle to keep pace with the rapidly evolving space industry. In a desperate bid to modernize, NASA turned to Collins Aerospace, hoping to outsource their way out of this predicament. But this strategy has backfired spectacularly. Collins's failure to deliver on time and their threat to withdraw from the spacesuit contract has left NASA in a precarious position, forced to contemplate pouring more money into a project that's already behind schedule. The irony is palpable. The agency that once put men on the moon now can't even outfit its astronauts in modern gear. Meanwhile, SpaceX, with its private funding, developed an EVA suit from their IVA suit. In fact, the EVA suit was the reason SpaceX had to delay the Polaris Dawn mission. But things heated up in January when SpaceX released a new image of the Polaris Dawn mission, showing part of their new spacesuit. On May 4th, after over two years of development, SpaceX unveiled the first promo video of their highly anticipated EVA spacesuit. The suit features groundbreaking improvements, including redesigned joints that maintain flexibility under high pressure and an advanced thermal management system with a radiation-resistant outer layer. The helmet integrates a camera and a HUD displaying vital stats. Unlike NASA's spacesuits, SpaceX's EVA suit does not have a mobile life support system. Instead, it connects directly to the Dragon spacecraft via oxygen and cooling water lines. This design optimizes weight and mobility. However, Isaacman anticipates that a mobile life support system for the SpaceX suit will be developed in the future. The suit's materials, sourced from Falcon and Dragon, combined with new thermal management fabric, create a durable yet flexible suit. These enhancements not only boost safety but also expand the capabilities for performing spacewalks. Later, in late May, media captured images of a SpaceX Dragon spacecraft moving at Kennedy Space Center, likely resilience for the Polaris Dawn mission. This spacecraft might be heading to one of SpaceX's facilities near LC-39A, or SLC-40, for final preparations before launch. Recently, Isaac Mann also mentioned that the team is very close to their goal. All major simulations have been completed. My fellas, give the MVP award to Isaac Jaredman. This man deserves it. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.